Well, I'm here with Chastity uh, Pratt Dossie from Bridge Magazine and Aaron Einhorn from Chalkbeat Detroit. And we're going to talk about first this lawsuit that was filed uh, earlier this month on behalf of seven Detroit students by the pro bono law firm Public Counsel out of California. And basically, it charges that the governor and the state of Michigan has denied children in Detroit, in their, these seven children, and by extension their peers, their constitutional right to literacy. They're trying to establish a constitutional right to literacy. Aaron, let me start with you. What is the significance of this lawsuit? I guess it depends on it whether or not it's successful, sure. obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of people can file a lawsuit, but this lawsuit was obviously very, very carefully thought out. Uh, the, the firm behind it is, is, is a national firm. They, I, I, you know, it, it, they, they were looking for a case, an opportunity, I think, to bring a case like this uh, because there are schools, not just in Detroit, but around the country uh, that aren't serving children very well. And I think this is, if this case is in fact successful, it could affect the way schools are funded, the way they're managed, the way they're operated. In, in big cities all around the country. And I mean, some of the evidence cited in this case, Chastity, it's just shocking. I mean, not just the conditions in the schools, which the lawsuit talks a great deal about, but also about the literacy levels of the children in the schools. And we're sitting in here in really an education palace. Castex, a beautiful school. This, this recital hall is fabulous. We're, we're thinking about my week doing our spring recital here. It's so magnificent, but you've been in other schools in Detroit that don't look like this. It, it runs the gamut. Mm -hmm. You know, Detroiters gave the school district two billion dollars over the past 20 some years to, to fix up schools. So you have schools like CAS and DSA and Renaissance and they're, they're really nice and gompers. I mean, lots of them, but not all of them. You have schools where they're really in disrepair and quite honestly, even the new schools and the ones that have been prepared are in some disrepair. You can go around CAS and find some issues because during all of these years of deficit, uh, they've not had the staffing to maintain mm -hmm. the buildings, to maintain the fixes, to maintain the repairs that uh, the Detroit residents invested in over the years. But it's not just the condition of the buildings. Um, right. The lawsuit does talk a lot about that, but also what goes on in the buildings. And it's pretty damning. I mean, basically they say these kids are getting very little, if any, real education. And they talk about uh, children who have, third graders who have vocabularies of no more than 400 words. Um, it, um, it, you know, it cites, of course, the governor for not paying attention, but what's going on in these schools that the performance is so poor and these children are getting such a little education? It's an absolute indictment of the entire system from top mm -hmm. to bottom. And it, it goes to the heart of what we've known since 2009 at least. Detroit Public Schools are performing the worst among big city schools across the nation. And why is that? What's really going on? I mean, they, they named it. I mean, you have everything from like Ivy was saying in the last segment, roaches and, roaches and rats and mm -hmm. things of that nature in some schools. But you have a real lack of, of just rigor and real just achievement. The achievement gap here is, is bigger than you'll see anywhere else. It sounds like nobody really cares in, about these kids. Well, the state took over several times mm -hmm. since 1999. The state is supposed to care, which is why they are straight and center, the target of this lawsuit. And people are already talking about Supreme Court. This can go right. all the way. This could be the big one, the one that everybody, this is, you know, the Moby Dick for all the civil rights education activists across the country. And uh, we had just this week, the governor signed this, just today, wasn't it? They sent the bill to him to, for third grade literacy. Yes. I don't know how that could impact the whole mm -hmm. uh, right to literacy lawsuit, but it's, it's all tied together. And if this goes to the Supreme Court, everybody in the country is gonna be looking at this. And Aaron, it probably is eventually get to the Supreme Court. And you've talked to some legal experts about its prospects. Cases like this have failed in the past. The Supreme Court in 73 ruled that education was not a right, but there are folks who think this, this case has a chance. I saw an interview with a Harvard constitutional law scholar who mm -hmm. called this, uh, he said Brown, Brown versus Board of Education was the first shoe and this is the next shoe to drop. So Brown versus Board of Education, 
made it illegal to, to deliberately, to make legal segregation uh, impossible, but this case is arguing that segregation has occurred and inequality has occurred by the way that we've structured our schools. And if that argument is successful with the Supreme Court, it could have extraordinary implications. And we think of this as a Detroit, Detroit suit, but if literacy is a constitutional right in Detroit, it's a constitutional right everywhere all across Michigan and all across at least the Sixth Circuit if they prevail in district court. Absolutely. And I mean, the, the court doesn't, sp the, the case doesn't spell out any particular monetary demands. They're not particularly asking for certain, you know, X amount of dollars. What they're saying is every child needs to learn to read. And if, that, if, if every child isn't learning to read, then the state isn't doing its job. And there's a, there's a number of ways to measure that, but I think looking at you know test scores looking at you know as you were saying you know a few hundred words of vocabulary you could make the case that in fact children are learning to read and chastity that is sort of the basic building block if we're trying to get these kids fluent in all of these subjects and testing them on right. m step in it if they can't read at some point, they say third grade reading is the key indicator because after that, you're reading to learn. You're reading to learn social studies, to, to learn math, you're, to learn science. You have to know to read mm -hmm. to learn those other subjects. And we know here in Michigan, we're 41st okay. out of 50 states. All right. Chastity Pratt, Dossie of Bridge Magazine, Aaron Einhorn of Chalk, Chalk Beat, thanks for being with us today.